Hi, this is John Black, Super Chemist. We're here to talk about vacuum pumps. Recently, I had a couple people ask about it. I used it in a couple videos here recently. So let's first of all go over what air pressure is or whatever. Um, all units should never be used except for these three units. Millimeter of mercury, tor, or micron. Keep in mind they're all exactly the same thing. If you have one tor, you have one micron. You have 10 tor, you have 10 millimeters of mercury. These are preferred to me because I don't have to say millimeter of mercury. I could just say micron, tor. It's easy. Uh, so an atmosphere is 760. So if I use, you know, sometimes I use tor, sometimes I use micron. So just so you know what I'm talking about. But they all mean this. So 760 microns is one atmosphere. Now I want you to keep in mind when you, you know, when you're doing a vacuum distillation, there's only one thing that's a cause of a new boiling point when you change the pressure. And that's how much you change the pressure and what the original boiling point was. Meaning if I, like right here, 500 tor, water boils at 85.5 Celsius. Well, that means for any liquid at atmospheric pressure that boils at 100, will, at, at that same pressure, will boil at 85.5, no matter what it is. doesn't matter. There's only one thing that matters. What was it, its original boiling point? It was 100. And what's the new pressure? 500. So, boom. It's that, it's that new boiling point, 85.5. No other properties matter when it comes to changing the boiling point of a, of a solvent by pressure change. I want you to notice I got 760 and then I went down to 700 and then I just kept going down 100, 100, 100, 100 until I got to 100 and I went in halves, 50, 25. And I couldn't get down to 12 and a half so I put 14.5. But my point is, is I'm showing you the different boiling points. You can see at 700 tor you're still boiling at 100 Celsius. You didn't change the boiling point. You didn't change the temperature of the boiling point. At 600 torr, you change it, and you'll see each one of these 100, you know, from this 700 to 600 is 7.4 Celsius difference. From 600 to 500 is 7.1. You can see it's all about seven. Every 100, it just goes down about seven. And then when it gets down to 300, it starts jumping more. 12, 17, six, you know what I mean? Um, but my whole point is, is even at 300 tor or 300 millimeters of mercury, right? Like halfway through your vacuum, you only lowered the boiling point by about 30, 31.8 degrees. So, I mean, from your original 100, if we're talking about water. Uh, you really need to get down to the low 50 microns or lower if you want to do high, you know, things that have boiling points of, of 280, you know what I mean? Because at that point, say at 25 tor, you've lowered it nine, more than 90 degrees from 100 down to 9.3. So that goes for anything. I mean, that means that if it was 200 degrees Celsius was the boiling point, it still lowered that same amount at 25 tor. It still comes down uh, about 90 degrees, you know what I mean? So, if you have a 280 degree boiling point and you have a, you know, 500 degree tor uh, vacuum, whoop de doo your 280 degree boiling point just lowered 15 degrees, whoop de doo what's, what's the point in even doing that? It's still like 260 or, you know, 200 or whatever degrees. It's still a high temperature. You need the low, you know, the lower microns to do high boiling point vacuum distillations. So anyways, let's go over a couple couple vacuums so that you can buy. And here's the cheapest one. These are all at Harbor Freight, okay? Uh, and you can anywhere they have air conditioning stuff for air conditioning fixer people, you know, because that's what this is for. All automotive. It's for automotive air conditioners. Um, but there's a one there that's $18. You might say, wow, that's cheap. I want to get that. But it says that it's advertised at 28.3 inches of mercury. 
So of course we have to translate it into normal people uh, units. Uh, that equals 719 tor. And as you can see, it doesn't even change the boiling point of water. Like it doesn't change the boiling point of anything. Uh, it would be good as a degasser, okay? Uh, because I made this right here. You might say, well, what the heck is that? Well, basically, it's just a canister. And I put a, because I had this idea a long time ago about putting a fish, you know, they have fish pumps for fish tanks, you know what I mean? To pump the air through the water so they have oxygen in the water to breathe. And I couldn't figure out because I, I can't get the fish pump out of there. But, oh, maybe I can. I got the lid here. You can see it has a, oh, you can see it has a uh, pipe sticking out of it on the one side. I really can't bring it out of the thing because it's glued in there. But there's a pipe that uh, sticks out so you can put a hose onto that pipe, right? And then the hose can go and lead into your water, right? And that pushes the whatever in. But on the other side that sucks in the air, it's going to push it into the tank. There's nothing to grasp onto. There's nothing to put a hose onto or anything like that. So I always wondered how can I use this fish tank pump to make a vacuum pump. And I can't remember who it was. I wish I could remember. Uh, but they said uh, put it in a canister like this and then have your tube connected that blows the air into the tank, right? And then have this hose is just going into the box. Now when I put the lid on, right? And I hook this up to my apparatus, this, this hose here, right? The pump will turn on and it will suck air from this hose down into the canister. Because this is just connected to the canister. It's not connected to the pump. And then it just sucks, you know, the, the pump sucks air and blows it out this thing. It's got to go somewhere so it comes from here. You know what I mean? It comes to your apparatus. And it, here, let me plug it in. I want you to see because it will actually cave in the in the box. Oh, it's not really caving it in. Oh, there it goes. Uh, you can see it. You can hear it, though. They're starting to crush in the sides. It works, though. It'll just crush it in a little bit and just, you know, that'll be out. Uh, and if, you, if I would have used a better container, this is just a little plastic one, so it doesn't, you know, it wouldn't do that. But anyway, oh, you see, see it expand? So anyway, it's a nice little whatever, uh, you know, a little experiment or whatever to have. That's why I did it. That sounded cool. Um, but that's not going to change the, you know, the boiling point of anything. You know what I mean? That's not going to change the boiling point of anything. But... You can use it to degas stuff. Let's say you're making something and you got you're making ammonia as a byproduct, and it's going to screw up your reaction, so you want to get it out. Or like when making methylamine, you want to get the CO2 out. You know, just degas that because it interferes with stuff. Yeah, that's great for that. You know, but you can get the same thing. Uh, like I said right here, for eighteen dollars at. Uh, Harbor Freight, and it's a vacuum pump that'll do that for you, and you won't even have to build it or whatever. Um, but it was an interesting project. Anyways, here's an, this is the one I had. This is the best one. It's $150 at Lowe's or at uh, Harbor Freight. 22.5 tor. That means the boiling point of water will be 7.3 degrees Celsius. So you couldn't even really have your pump on full and, and distill water because it would just boil so quickly you wouldn't be able to do it. <clears throat> but to have a cheaper one for $90, it's 75 tor. So the boiling point of water would be 32.4 C and room temperature is between 20 and 25 C. So you'd have to heat it up a little bit so it wouldn't, you know what I mean, you wouldn't have to worry about turning on your pump and all the water just bumps out of your, you know, out of your reaction flask. Uh, so now that we've gone over that, let's go over some of the pumps. Now, I'm really not a mechanically inclined person. I'm not the type of person that can fix stuff and build stuff. Um, the first time I used a pump like this, um, 
a buddy bought it for me. He brought it over and I used it and it was just spraying out oil left and right and it was coming out of this cap thing right here and I the guy that brought it over he was a mechanically inclined person so I whatever he said about it I, I took this you know you know word you know that was it uh, and I said look at all this oil splurting out you know it's it's just like a fog it wasn't like liquid it was a big fog and within you know 10 15 minutes the room would be you know, it looked like a fog of oil. And I said, I don't know, I guess that's just the way it's supposed to be. And the way you put the oil in was a little thing on the side. I'll show you on my other apparatus. I don't know if you can see it on this one, but you can see there's a little red cap there. That's where you put the oil in. Okay. So I thought that that was supposed to be open slightly to let the, so that it wouldn't, you know, build up a vacuum inside the motor or something. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not mechanically inclined. I didn't think about it. That's the way he said it worked, and that's the way I said it worked. You know, that's the way I did it from then on. Now I and I never bought the this cheap kind of this because this is the 22.5 tour one. It's broke right now. That's why I got it in this thing. It's leaking. So I went and I bought this one, and it's a 75 tour one. So now I can actually. Uh, distill water, um, but there's no thing, there's no thing to put the oil in, right? Nothing here. So I read the instruction booklet, and guess what the instruction booklet says? So you take this off and put the oil in here. There's a hole here. This comes off, right? And uh, then it says when you're done, tightly tighten the cap. So the ta I've been leaving this cap open instead of it it still comes out a little bit, you know, in, the, in here, you know what I mean, to relieve pressure or whatever. Um, but it's, you can have it on for hours before it really starts, you know, getting the, you know, where you're like, wow, I see oil fog in the air, you know what I mean? Um, so it's really no big deal as long as you have this shut. So that just shows you what a moron I am. But anyways, this is the 75 Tour 1. They all have this same thing. Like I said, these are for... These are for, uh, you know, cars, you know, for your vacuum, to, for your air conditioner. You can see there's two. There's two screw thingies here, one going up and one coming out towards the camera. They're two different sizes. One fits high pressure hoses. And one fits low low pressure hoses or AC HABC hoses. Okay. And here's here's a, and they got and they all have a switch on the side so you can turn it on and off when you want. But let's go over some hoses. Now here's a typical thing you buy from you know that you buy with that uh, vacuum pump if you were fixing the air conditioners or cars or whatever. Um, this has a low pressure on it and a high pressure. But the thing is, is the low pressure is only this right here. The vacuum part is only right here. It really doesn't give you much of a, you know, you know if it's you have a good vacuum or not, but you really don't know what in between. It's not very good. Uh, here, these come off too. Um, but they also come with these hoses, and you don't have to buy this, this particular uh, gauge. You can buy your own gauge. Um, and these, they come with hoses, three of them. This one is uh, blue. They always have blue, red, and yellow for low, high, and neutral. And these are built for the machine. This is built for the vacuum. And you can see, you can see that, the, the, you know, the hose comes out of there, right? And then you just screw the hose onto these outlets. It's that simple. Boom. Right? Now, if you use this gauge, you're going to have your hose coming out to here. And then you'll have another yellow hose that you put in the middle here. Right? You can screw it onto there. And this valve opens up. And then wherever this yellow hose goes to, that's where you can plug it into your apparatus, right? So you can get your vacuum. 
and then that way you can read the 